What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. Happy Friday, people. And I believe I'm just about on time there, about maybe 30 seconds, but we'll take that. Big up each and every time. I'm not always there when you call, but I'm always on time. All right, not always on time. Sometimes lateness is greatness. But we're pretty much on time today. Big up everyone. Happy Friday. Hope you're well. Weekend settings. A weekend without Arsenal playing means a weekend with no stress. That is for sure because um, we know that Arsenal uh, usually brings stress to the weekend. Although, I'm not going to lie, uh, the way we've been playing lately, they've been bringing a lot of happiness to the weekend. So, yeah, I, I, you know, it is going to be a bit strange with Arsenal not playing this weekend. But we go again on Monday. Sheffield United away. Should be a beat down. And uh, I'm expecting goals, that is for sure. But, yeah, I will enjoy a weekend without Arsenal playing. I can't lie until Monday. Uh, as I said, people, just as a reminder... Um, I'm on with Turkish at 7 o'clock on his channel. Make sure you tune in for that. And uh, on Sunday, we're going to do a Manchester Derby watch along, I believe. I think it's a 3 o'clock kickoff um, on Sunday. So make sure you tune in for that. And then obviously we'll do the... Um, We'll do the Arsenal game Monday night. Bad man forward, bad man pull up. Bad... Yo, Ja Rule, he didn't even get in the country, people. They didn't want to let him into England. He said that... Um, and then now, 50's going on the rampage. Um, he's saying he's got a criminal record. Well, they're like, how come Bobby Schmurder's in the country? And he's been down for way bigger charges. So, yeah, it is what it is, people. Uh, big up Wama, happy Friday. Big up your damn self. He's gifted 10. Curtis Shaw TV memberships to kick off the Friday show. Big up Whammo, always supporting the channel. And I told you, we're going to have, everyone's going to be a member by the end of the season. We'll get there somehow, some way, people. So big up to my light, Whammo. Ten new members. Um, so big up to you, bro. Really appreciate that. And um, yeah, let's get into the show. Uh, what we got here, my sweet. Hey, listen, we're going to talk about Jokerez, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm starting to be convinced I am. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy how quickly you can change your mind about a player. Not that I didn't rate him. Um, but I thought it was, you know, oh, I just come from Coventry. I don't know if this guy really is the guy. Um, but what I've seen of him in the last few games and that game last night, I was impressed. We'll get into that anyway. David Ornstein as well has put out a big report. And we're going to talk about some of the things he said. Not that he's always right, but... Um, he certainly is probably the mouthpiece of the football club. So, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's an interesting one with what he had to say. And Ronaldo said, big up Big C, favourite dancehall artist or reggae artist. Favourite ever, obviously, Bob Marley. In terms of dancehall, I think the king is Cartel. Cartel is the king. I respect Mavado, but Cartel, man, I don't think any, you know, being in a rave back in the day when the Cartel tune came on. It was game over, you know. It was it was wild. Um, I like that new song from um, from Bob Marley's grandson as well. I believe it's Lauren Hill's son. Is it YG Marley in the Bob Marley film? I like that song as well. That's a banger. Um, anyway, Budger Banton as well, definitely. But hey, let's not get into that too much. I'll be here for. I'll be here all day. Anyway, let's talk about uh, Declan Rice. Man like Deckers. Um, he won, um, what is it, the London Football Awards Player of the Year last night. I mean, I mean, listen, these um, these awards sort of come and go, but it's still nice to see an Arsenal player winning them. Declan Rice won London Footballer of the Year for 2023. Obviously, the first six months are for what he did at West Ham. Obviously, he won the Conference League. He was their captain. So that was for the first part of 2023. He's obviously then signed for Arsenal. And let's be honest, and I've been saying this for a little while, um, I think um, I think he's probably been the signing of the season, which when you think about how much he cost, is testament to him because, you know, for 105 million, I wanted Declan Rice at Arsenal. But even I had doubts whether he was worth 105 million pounds for a defensive midfielder. But I'll be honest, I don't give a damn about the price now. I'm not even interested. This guy is an absolute baller, a leader, hardly ever injured. He's a baller. Now, as somebody just said in the comments, 
this award don't go over the top about it um Ange Postacoglu won manager of the year how the hell does he win manager of the year number one he only came to the Premier League in the summer number two last time I checked they're, they're, they're not they're not winning nothing this season. You know, I doubt very much they're going to win anything. So what the hell is he winning manager of the year for? You know, just because he says mate a lot and sounds like he's from home and away. Like, I'm not having it. Big Ange, I, I don't know. I don't know who voted that. Harry Kane and Daniel Levy, I think. Mikel should have won that. Um, but hey, it is what it is. But listen, Declan Rice, London Footballer of the Year. But when you give him manager of the year to Ange Postacoglu, at that point, my uh, the level of seriousness around this award sort of drops through the floor. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. I actually had a ticket to attend this event, um, but I couldn't go. Um, but, yeah, Ange. Ange got it for what? Attacking and fun football. I mean, what what is this? Are we at, um, are we at Alton Towers? Are, you know, we have a good day out, mate. You know, high line for life. You know, c come on, man. Get out of it. Moisey should have won it. You're right. Moisey won a European trophy at West Ham. Give it Moisey, bro. Not Ange. Ange shouldn't have even been top three. Roy Hodgson managing Palace when he's 145 years old. you got Mikel Arteta, title challenge, Champions League, um, knockout stages. And then you've got David Moisey who won a European Cup. But old high line for life on it. At that, even Thomas Frank keeping them up in the league is is a bigger achievement. But hey, let's leave it as that. Yeah, we listen. We know Spurs are the media darlings. Um, they they no threat to anyone. When you no threat to anyone, people don't mind you. You know, and Tottenham don't threaten anyone, do they? They don't threaten trophies. They you know so it is what it is. Um, but hey, um, yeah, Declan Rice won that. Uh, Trixie said, can't lie, Big C, DeMarco and Collie Buds were on the... Hey, uh, hey listen, I, I, I don't mind, you know, um, especially DeMarco as well. English Premier League pl player of the season so far. I mean, listen, who would you who would you vote as Premier League player of the season? That is interesting. I mean, automatically the brain goes to Harlem because he's top scorer, but he was injured for... How long was he injured for? Seven, eight weeks? I think it's Declan Rice. But the problem is, player of the season usually goes to the club where they win the major trophy. If Arsenal won the Premier League, Declan Rice would probably win player of the season. But if Man City win the league, it automatically it probably just ends up going to Haaland or maybe going to Rodri. So it kind of falls in line with, um, with the title winners. So I... You know it's hard, but I do think that um, I do think that Rice has probably been up there as player of the season. Um, static, bro, that should be sorted for you. I've just sorted that. Uh, can manage stand up. That should be that should be sorted for you, Static. Um, I've done that for you, so let me know if it's all working, bro. Um, it should it should be all right now. Anyway, yeah, Declan Rice for me. Declan Rice. Hey, Ollie Watkins, that's a good shout. He is having a great season. I can't lie. I do rate Ollie Watkins. Um, he's he's having a very good season. I don't I don't rate him to the point that I want him at Arsenal, but he's definitely playing well this season. Uh, BGT said Tony should have been appointed Gambler of the Year. It's a bit harsh. Uh, I don't think he'd have been able to collect his award. He was in the casino around the corner. Uh, Rosh said different to American MVPs. Uh, make sure you run the likes up. Zeno said Saka is the best player in London. Um, but again, they go off achievement. Declan Rice, captain West Ham to a title. Uh, uh, not a title, a trophy. So it kind of works like that. You need to win trophies around your your quality performances as well. And then I think it's... It's easier, you know, so Pogba banned for four years. I mean, first of all, four-year ban just seems too long. I don't really understand that. Other players have had performance-enhancing drugs. I've never seen them banned for four years. Uh, Wama said, sorry, as an Aussie, stick to the Daichi accents, mate. Serious questions. So what, my Australian wasn't great? Yeah, I thought I was prime Sydney at that point. He said, serious question, how far off City are we in terms of signings? I think we are... I think we are City, I mean, two, two or three. I think if right now, 
we had a, a beast of a centre midfielder next to Declan Rice with Odegaard in the 10. And I think if we had a world... Well, it doesn't even have to be world-class, but a top-quality striker, 20-goal-a-season striker. You're talking then maybe a couple squad-depth players, another right-winger, maybe another another defender. So I'd say three or four, but I think two that very much were in the first team. So I'd say four. I'd say two squad players and two starters, and I think we'd be on the same level as Manchester City as a, as a team when everybody is fit. Um, obviously, injuries, you can't, you can't take them into account. But I, yeah, I mean, Peter, I, I still am not fully convinced that our goalkeeper is on the same level as the Manchester City and the Liverpool goalkeeper, if I'm being honest. I would still say Edison and Alisson are a level above David Rea and Aaron Ramsdale, but that's if I'm really nitpicking at everything. Uh, oh, Static back being a mod, welcome back. Well, Static, for anyone who don't know, he was a mod for a long time on this channel. And I didn't see him in the comments for a long time, so I changed some of the mods but he's, he's been part of the community for a long time. And I said he said, look, I'm back now. He's been in the comments for ages. So put him back in. He's been here from, from early. So, yeah, man, big up. Um, DTX London said, Big C, assuming the top three all win their next games, wouldn't you prefer City to beat Liverpool, therefore leaving us within one point in our hands to go top when we play them at the Etihad? It's a great question. And one that I've looked at a number of times. Like, I don't... I genuinely don't know what the better result is when those two play each other. Like, do we want... If Liverpool beat City, we can sort of push them out of the way if we potentially beat them at the Etihad, which is hard to do, by the way. And then we would maybe turn it into a two-horse race between us and Liverpool. But then my worry is I think Liverpool have got the easiest running out of the three teams. So Liverpool beating Man City would be a massive concern to me because looking at their remaining games, I, I, I just, if Liverpool beat City at Anfield, I would I would almost say they're favourites to win the league, having looked at the rest of their fixtures. So for me, I think a draw is the best result. Um, but Liverpool winning could be a big problem as well. Um, but we'll see. Listen, anything, whatever happens, there's a positive somewhere. If Liverpool win, City drop points. City win, Liverpool drop. If they draw, they both drop. Trixie said, Fring Pong, Jokeres, Barella, Chua Meni. Uh, Chua Meni, I, I don't think you're getting him out of Real Madrid. He's he's very happy there. He's um, He starts a lot of the time. I think we missed our chance to get him. Once Real Madrid come to the forefront, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think you've got any chance. For Zeal said, "Would you be against us signing Mason Greenwood?" Absolutely, one hundred million percent. I would not want to see that scumbag at Arsenal. I don't care. Listen, for me, and I'm not going to say too much about it. Um, sometimes you don't need a court case or or charges to justify whether someone's guilty or not. I'm sorry. You know, we all heard the we all heard the voice note, man. It, you know. I won't say too much about it, but if that guy played for Arsenal, seriously, I would, I would be, I would be looking at Arsenal sideways. Honestly, I, w I would. Oh, nah, nah. Man United. I'm being honest. Man United are probably in a situation where, you know, they're probably shamelessly trying to bring him back, but it would be a disaster for them if they brought him back. You know, seriously, you can't bring that scumbag back to the Premier League. Um, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. I don't want to talk about things like that on a Friday. Let's talk about man like Jokerez. Two days ago, I couldn't even say his name right. I was calling him Gaio Kerez. Um, but listen, I watched part of the game last night. Not all of it, but I watched the highlights after. Um, I'm going to be honest, people. I'm going to be honest, shamelessly. A few days ago, I was like, ah, I don't know. Portuguese league tax. Only done it in the championship. I'm not going to lie. This guy is creeping up the list. Let me tell you something. I didn't know he was that quick. He look, I didn't know he could shift like that. I thought the guy was like tall but slow, Giroud-esque. I seen the guy outpacing people yesterday. Look quick. Scored the winning goal yesterday for Sporting Lisbon against Benfica. Again, I mean, he's playing against Otto Mendy, who's about 34. So I'm not going to say that, you know, he didn't look Thierry Henry quick. But he scored the winner. It was a great goal. He's aggressive. 
Yo, I'm not going to lie. He is creeping up the list. He looks a problem. He looks a real problem. Now, I'm I'm now reading stories like people were saying yesterday that they're asking for big, big money. We could be talking 80 million. The initial rumor was saying 50 million. Now they're saying it could be around 80 million. Listen, don't get me wrong. There is still a lot of risk around this signing. He's 25 years of age. He's had one season in um, the Portuguese league. Before that, he was playing in the championship for Coventry. He's banged goals in for Coventry. Got the move to um, sport in Lisbon. You're right, yes, in the celebration. You know what I mean? I, I'm all doing this. I said, yo, I'm watching the guy play. And listen, like Latte just said, bro, the thing with me, stats, cool. Um, you know, compilations, great. I need to watch the guy play. And the eye test does not lie. The guy looks a player. He looks a player. I'm telling you now, he's creeping up the list and he's 25. So I've always said, I think the problem with Ivan Tony coming to Arsenal is the fact he turns 28 this season. I'm not sure Arsenal will pay massive money for a guy that's 28 years of age. And you're right, Diamande at the back is beast mode. Beast mode, I'm telling you. That is a dog. And I want dogs at Arsenal. I don't want puppies. I don't want um, photo shoots with puppies on the chest saying, look how cute they are. I want dogs. I want pit bulls. I want them XL bully pit bulls that they're trying to ban. I want them in my team. Diamande looks like a pit bull. He's a beast, 20 years of age. This guy, Jokerez, I'm going to want to watch more of him. I'm going to try and keep a bit of a closer eye on sport in Lisbon now because I really want to watch him. But I like the celebration. I like the personality. He's banging goals in. He's deceptively quick. Looks a good player. Looks a very good player. His goal last night, if anybody hasn't seen it, go and watch the highlights last night of his goal um, against Benfica. Um, Costa said, here in Sweden, we rate him higher than Isak right now. He is the guy. Listen, anybody who's watched a lot more of him, let me know. Feel free to let me know in the comments. If you're watching this on playback, Put a comment in, anybody that watches Portuguese football, anybody from Sweden that wants some watches in play for their country, let me know. I want to get a little bit more insight on, in on him. How good is he? But proper player, man. Looks a real handful. Um, and, I, and like I said, I didn't realise he was that quick. Curtis on the phone to Nuno after the stream ends. Oh, oh, oh. I don't want a dog like that. Like, I don't want a brother that does funny business with his dog. I want real dogs that bark at people. Oh, oh, oh. Where my dog's at? Uh, oh, oh. DMX settings, people. But he looks proper. He looks proper. So, But it'll be expensive. He will be expensive. Sesco has better numbers per night in much harder league and much younger. Uh, Sesco, again, I mean, I watched a bit of him in the Champions League. I'm not sure about him yet. Maybe I'm doing him a disservice. I just haven't watched much of him. And, I, and you know, I don't like to look at the stats too much, but seven goals this season... For um for Leipzig, 16 last year for Salzburg, and he's 20. I'm just thinking with Sesco, does he need a bit more time to develop? Where it seems like Jokerez is a little bit further down the line. He's he's done that dirty work in the championship and he's banging goals in this year. Uh, Ryan said, Curtis, I'm from Coventry. Was raving about him being miles better than Eddie last year. Nobody would listen. Listen, when when a guy's banging goals in the championship, ultimately at Arsenal, you're going to be like, okay, well, I need to see him do it at a higher level. But I like what, I, you know, he looks a player. Uh, Vanja said, I don't care what striker we get as long as he is ready for the first 11. Arteta and Edu and the owners at that have earned my full trust. I mean, I wouldn't say full trust with me, Vanja, but, you know, we have got to trust them. We're just in that situation. When I see new contract to Eddie and Ketty, or a new contract to El Nenny, Cedric four year deal, run awesome being signed, have a 65 million, you know, full trust. I'm not at that stage yet. I've got to be honest. Dr. Barron said, Big C, there is a good striker under the radar. Artem from Girona. They play a similar style as Arsenal. He would slot in perfectly. I just want somebody. Whoever it is, I want somebody that's ready, like you said, for the first team. Uh, I've seen that guy's... Uh, I'm looking at that guy's stats now, that Artem. I've heard about him 
14 goals this year in La Liga, Ukrainian international, 26 years of age. Listen, whoever it is, he's got to be ready. I don't want a project signing. I want somebody that is ready to hit the ground running and bang goals in. So, uh, Ryan said, thanks for the reply, mate. He's very good at winning duels. He likes to dribble a lot with the ball. He's a bit of a Giroud um, with his ability to give assists. Looks quicker as well. Uh, e. Ross said, uh, big up Curtis and C unit community. Hope everyone is well. Latte said, Jokerez is six foot two with physicality and fast. Listen, I'm, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely a fan of what I've seen of him lately, man. The highlights, the goals last night. He looked aggressive, man. I like the aggressive running of him as well. Uh, Salman said, uh, Dov, Do is it Dov Bick? Um, is a baller been watching him all season, but I think he will stay in Girona. A Girona, um, are they owned by Man City? I'm sure City have got something to do with Girona. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, man, I've said his teammate said in 2023, I think the celebration is because of the character in Hannibal Lecter. He eats people and Victor destroys defences. I mean, listen, I, listen, if, he's, if it's beast mode, then we'll take him. I don't want to see players in tears and all of that, you know. So, Jokerez, very impressive performance last night, scoring against Benfica. Uh, a player who could be on his way out, people, is Aaron Ramsdale, a.k.a. Curried Goatsdale. Um, Chelsea are being linked with a move. We've spoken about this before. And uh, also, City do own Girona. There's no surprise they're having success then. Um Chelsea are willing to sell Robert Sanchez this summer and could bring in Arsenal goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale as a replacement. Um, that's reported by Graham Bailey, who's usually quite good when it comes to these things. Now, we have spoken about this be uh, before. The problem we've got is two things. We've got two things here that we need to take into account. Number one. Chelsea have never done Arsenal a favour. In fact, they've bumped us, they've ripped us off. They've committed credit card fraud as far as I'm concerned. You took 65 offers for Havertz, you sold us Peter Cech when he was an old man, you gave us Ben Ayoun on loan, you gave us William Gallas, the crybaby. Um, who else? You know, David Luiz was not too bad. We owe them no favours. Now, this is the problem you've got. Arsenal are going to want to sell Ramsdale. They're not going to want to keep a 100, 120 grand a week goalkeeper who's not happy on the bench. Now, how much is Aaron Ramsdale worth? This is the problem. How much? There's, there's almost two questions. How much is he worth and how much can Arsenal get for him? We've definitely been deboed. They've pulled up on that BMX bike multiple times. Craig and Day Day. And they've took all kinds of money off us. Two quick, yeah, Willian as well. How can I forget the most expensive free transfer ever? There's two questions. Number one, how much is he worth? Then number two, how much can Edu get for him? I guarantee you the two answers will not line up the same. In reality, Aaron Ramsdale should be 50 million quid. English international, mid-20s, Premier League, Chelsea need a goalkeeper. Chelsea paid nearly 30 million for Robert Sanchez. Bang average goalkeeper at Brighton, right? And as you can see, he hasn't been good at all. I think they paid 27 million for him. Ramsdale's worth 20 million quid more than him. The problem is, this is Arsenal. This is Edu. We'll get a Tesco meal deal. Packet of crisps, a drink and a sandwich for him. I reckon we'll, be, I reckon we'll get our money back. I'll be honest. I think we'll be lucky to get our money back. I think we paid 30 plus 5. 35 million. I'll be surprised if we get more than 30, 35 for him, honestly. Because I said this before, Arsenal have this terrible habit of when a player, when they're selling a player, the whole world knows they want to sell the player. So ultimately, if you go to buy something and you know that they want to sell it, you don't offer the true value of it. You know, if you know there's desperation, you're going to offer less. We should get 50 million quid for him, but we won't. I think we'll get 30, 35. At a push, you might get 35 plus 5 and get 40 for him. I'd be surprised if we even got that for him, honestly. Um, as we're so bad at selling players. Uh, second of all, my, my second sort of question is, let's say the price was 
35 million and get your money back. Would you sell him to Chelsea? Uh, you know, do you just look at Chelsea now and think, listen, mid-table dons, don't care about them. Take Ramsdale off our hands, get him off the books, not bothered. Or do you look at it as, look, Chelsea are a team that potentially could cause us a problem in the future if it ever clicks? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I think Oxlade Chamberlain and Iwobi and is it Mark Overmars? I think 40 million is our record transfer ever which is unbelievable at the point we're at as a club and, and the players we've sold. So uh, Chris said 30 for Rambo is genuinely scandalous. That would be massively disappointing. I mean, look, in the summer, they were saying Arsenal would take 20 million for Kieran Tierney, you know, because the injury problems and not playing. Uh, listen, we should get at least 40, but I, I don't think we will. This is Arsenal. We are a poor selling club. Accept the cookies for the next five seasons. My worry is always when you say, sell a player, to a club in the league um, because of his age. Can you imagine if Chelsea signed Ramsdale and all of a sudden his game went up to a different level and he's balling out and you've saved them because right now they've got a problem in goal. Why should we help Chelsea out for 30 million quid, even if they are on page two and I've got to accept the cookies? I'll be honest, I, I would sell him to Chelsea, but the price has got to be right. Bruce Forsyth settings, people. The price is right. They ain't getting no favours out of me. So, listen, we're going to have to get him off the wage bill. He wants to leave. If Chelsea are the buying club, then I sell him to Chelsea. But you ain't turning up with peanuts to get him. We know how the crazy money that you pay for players. You paid £88 million for for Mudrick. I want at least £40 million for, for for Rambo. And I'd put a sell-on clause in there as well. Yeah, listen, if you can get him to buy Munich and get him out of the country, then cool. Nick said we finessed Monaco with Balogun. i got to admit, man, Balogun... Doesn't look as good as I thought he would, but who knows? Got to give him time. Looking at Balogun's stats, yeah. 13 starts, 5 goals, 3 assists. He's not having a great season. Carla said, Big C, I think the Mudrick is the option for Arsenal. He's quick. Arsenal can save him. Check notes. Sorry I meant he's perfect for my Arsenal career mode. Um, listen, I think they'll stick with Mudrick for another year, despite the reports the other day. And Carlos said Chelsea ownership will not allow them success ever. I hope so. Hopefully they keep splurging money and it doesn't work. Um, yeah, Bayern Munich have been linked with him. I mean, JV here, he's got the Bayern Munich badge. He said 50 million, I'll take him. They are going to have to um, replace Neuer. At some stage, he's getting old, he's had injury problems. Amo said Balogun was poor in pre-season when he came on. So Roscoe said 40 million plus Sanchez. They can have Rambo. We are going to need a second choice goalkeeper. Rayo will sign permanently, probably become number one. We are then going to need a backup goalkeeper. And you do need a decent second choice keeper. That would probably make sense. Robert Sanchez plus money um, as, a, as a second choice. Uh, Archman said, that if we sell Rambo, we should sell him for 50 to 70 million. You ain't getting 70 million for Ramsdale. It's just not happening. Not with him spending basically a season out of the team. Pokemon Go, how, how can I get tickets for Porto? Listen, tickets are a nightmare at the moment. Tickets are an absolute nightmare. I don't know if anybody's seen the stuff that's going on on the website at the moment. They're banning people. Um, it's crazy. The best way to get tickets is join as a red member and get in the ballot and hope that you're lucky and you're nominated. Um, otherwise, there's websites or you go to the ground and you're going to pay three or four times more than what the ticket's worth. Uh, Simon said, uh, Rambo sits on the bench unless Chelsea pay the money. Static said, Curtis, that's a good idea for the sell-on clause, especially if he goes to Chelsea. I would love that as well. Do a player swap for one of their best players. Yeah, I'd be cheeky with Chelsea. I'd say, listen, okay, what player have Chelsea got that we'd actually take off them that's a realistic player? They're not going to give us Enzo or Caicedo, somebody they paid $100 million for. But is there a player at Chelsea that we'd say, you know what, we'd take him as a squad player as part of the deal? I, I don't know. I mean, Reese James is injury prone. De Sassi looks pretty good at centre-back. I, I don't know. I'm not sure, but... Dan said, uh, big up, uh, support a big C. First comment, do people still tell, sell tickets at the ground? They do. Obviously, you, you've got to be very careful for two reasons. Um, number one, anybody buying tickets outside the ground off a ticket tout. Number one, I've heard of situations where people have bought fake tickets. They've gone to the stadium, scanned the ticket, nothing's happened. 
tickets fake be very careful second of all even if the ticket is real you're going to get bumped like they're gonna charge you three or four times more than the tickets worth so if you ever do that be very very careful um i i remember one time a few years ago before i had this link that i've got a ticket tout was selling a ticket and i said i i said to him walk to the gate scan the ticket in so the gate opens and i'll give you the money there and then as that ticket scans and lets me in so that's what i did because you know you got to be careful you give somebody money and you can't get in it's a problem so be very careful be very very careful also trying to clamp down on reselling basically which is you know why they're doing all this crazy thing online so difficult to get tickets Leahy said, if someone like Arteta cannot win coach of the season, he won't win unless he wins the league or Champions League. Listen, let's be real, Leahy. London manager of the year, it's no big deal. It's not PFA. It's not Premier League. It's not, you know, it's a made up award from a company, you know. So, and they've picked it probably off of, he's a vibe merchant, um, Big Ange. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, L said someone ripped 14 off and Ketty or hopefully he'll be out the door in the summer. You know, that, that story needs to end. Yeah, most tickets are going digital now, email only as well. But sometimes you can get tickets. Elliot said, take it from me, get ready to spend on the ticket touts and be careful. Yeah, and I know Elliot has been over to England a few times. Um, Keith said him and his brother were almost kicked out. His mum bought tickets online. They're basically now, what they want to do is they want the person sitting in... They want to know who everybody is in the stadium. You know how it is nowadays, people. They want a, they want a cashless society at some stage. Everything on card, everything can be tracked. They want to know the person sitting in seat 24, row H, is this guy. They don't want it that... He bought the ticket, but he sold it to some random guy and he made three times his money on it and some random sitting in the chair. And if anything happens, they don't know who it is. Plus, you're making money off Arsenal. It's all that stuff in it, you know. And there's all these bots online now that are buying tickets and then flinging them on websites. I don't know if you remember last season, Wolves at home last season which I think was, was it the last or second to last game? People were selling tickets for 10 to 15,000 pounds because they thought we were going to be playing Wolves at home to win the title. So people were saying this is going to be a historic game, 10 grand a ticket, 12 grand a ticket. So bots were buying tickets and just selling them, 10 grand, 10 grand. And there are people out there, they've got enough money, they'll pay 10 grand. You know what I'm saying? I was even saying, listen, if we're in the title race, you know, I might sell my ticket, and, you know, 10 grand, I'll stay at home and watch it. So be very, very careful when it comes to buying tickets. My best advice, join as a red member and enter the ballot. And if you win it, you get it at cost price. You know you're getting in. It is what it is. Bro, 10 grand a ticket. It's crazy. Can you imagine if Arsenal get to the Champions League final at Wembley, how much those tickets will go for? Oh, my God. You could be looking 15, 20 grand a ticket. Jackpot if you can get one. Um, so, yeah, be very careful. The Arsenal ticket system is an absolute mess. It's a real, real mess this season. Um, anyway, let's move on. Aaron Ramsdale, as I said, for me, I think he'll leave this summer. If Chelsea put money on the, on the, on the table, I would be willing to sell him. But don't do them any favours. I don't want to see £30 million deals get some money or maybe do a swap deal and take a player off them. Now, very interesting report in The Athletic from the mouthpiece of the football club. Man like David Ornstein um, dropping bombs all over The Athletic this morning. <laughs> Ambient said the earth equals flat. Well, you know, we're <laughs> uh, 20. Uh, uh, this this for me is, uh, it, it, this is potentially a timeout. I'm not going to lie, and, and you're in the comments, and I respect you. He said, call me crazy, but I'd take Nicholas Jackson for Ramsdale. Honestly, bro, I'd rather sign I'd rather sign Jermaine Jackson out of the Jackson 5 than sign Nicholas Jackson, bro. You must be absolute. If that guy ever signed for Arsenal, oh my, Arsenal therapy, I'd be in rehab for three months. I don't want that bomb anywhere near Arsenal Football Club. Three minutes on the naughty step. Thank you for the super chat. 
you're going in time out for that, honestly. You need three minutes to consider your actions. You really do. Um, you could have said... I, there's so many players at Chelsea you could have said that I would have been like, oh, okay, I can see your thought process. Yeah, that could be a four-year ban with Pogba. You might be on performance enhancing, but I don't know. Um, you could have said loads of players I would have said. Well, I get it. Don't you dare say um, Axon Jackson or whatever they call him. Anyway, <laughs> I'll see you in three minutes. Uh, have you ever thought of doing fan cams after the watch along? I know it's a lot. It would be interesting. I might do, you know. I definitely think I need to expand a little bit. And I want to do some more short content on the channel to go alongside the live streams and stuff. So, Lay, yeah, it's a good point. I may do that. Maybe something that I would do, maybe get some members, a group of the members after the stream. You could send me in a reaction video and we upload it. Maybe something like that, yeah. We'll definitely look into that. This next international break, I'm looking at adding some more stuff. Uh, and I might do a fan cam myself as well, because I think when you do it straight after the game finishes, you get that raw emotion. And uh, maybe we do a little 10-minute fan cam as well after the game. So, yeah, man. Uh, don't worry, streams won't disappear as well. Pokemon Go said, I'm proud of myself. Started a whole conversation. Big up yourself. That's what the community is about. Sometimes on quiet news days, one of you drop an interesting comment. We get it on. It starts a whole debate. That's what it's about. Mr. Cool Bus Driver said, uh, you should do a fan cam. Might bring in some more memberships. Well, just, you know, you want more eyes and ears on the channel. And the thing is, when you only do lo uh, long content and streams, sometimes it's hard to pick up new followers because... We live in a we live in a junk food society, and it, what I mean by that is everything is very quick. People want to see something five minutes. They go, I like that. I'll I'll subscribe. With sometimes with long content, um, you know, people haven't got the patience to watch it. Unfortunately, but big up you guys have. Um, big up Justice who said he lost both his parents. Just got my second investment property in Texas business. Moving brazy. Thanks for this community. Big up yourself, bro. Great that you can lean on the community for support. And obviously, sorry to hear about your, your sad news. Um, and Yami said, bring on C-Unit Discord. We'll definitely do maybe a Discord or a um, or maybe a WhatsApp group or something like that anyway. Definitely. Right, let's get into this Ornstein um stuff that he's talking about and he's put some interesting things in so ornstein did a video and uh with the athletic and he's brought a um he's brought up an interesting point and it was about alexander zinchenko now zinchenko this summer has got two years left on his contract so zinchenko signed a four-year deal with a one-year option this is his second season and uh Ornstein said it will be interesting to see if Arsenal try to tie Zinchenko down to a new contract or not as he is approaching the final two years of his terms. Now, it got me thinking, like, would you actually give Zinchenko a new contract or not? How much of a success do you believe he has been? I think we've got to look at a few points when it comes to Zinchenko. Number one, there's no doubt when we are playing well, dominating the ball, and he inverts, there's no doubt he offers us something on the ball. I'm not going to deny him what he is good at. There's absolutely no doubt about that. The other argument is also, ultimately, I don't think he's a left-back. I've always said playing left-back at Man City is not the same as playing left-back anywhere else. They dominate the ball so much, you don't need to be as good defensively. The problem you've got with Zinchenko, defensively, I think he's a liability at times. Um, he's not a natural defender, and he, he can be got at, and I think he's targeted a lot of the time. And the second thing... The guy's injury prone. He missed 11 games last season. We've got 12 games left this season. And uh, he's, he's played 21 games so far out of 26. So he's already missed five. He missed 11 last year. So that's 16 games missed in two seasons. And depending on how many he misses for the rest of the season, he is not available often enough, which I don't like. Once I see injury prone players, I panic. So would you guys extend Zinchenko's contract? Also, just to put it into context, Zinchenko earns 150 grand a week. So I'm I think this is worthy of a poll. 
Um, what would you do with Zinchenko this summer? Uh, two years left. Now, they're saying that Arsenal don't want players getting to a year of their contract. What would you do with Zinchenko? Would you extend the... Con I'm going to give you three options. Do you extend the contract? Extend the contract. Would you sell him while he has more value? Or would you just keep him for another year and maybe sell him next season with a year left? But obviously, um, you're not going to get as much value with him. Let me know. What would you do with Zinchenko? Extend the contract, sell him, or keep him for one more year? Do we need to start getting a better defensive left back there? I'll be honest. I think if Timber was fit this season, Zinchenko would have sat on the bench most of this season. I'm going to be honest. I, I think I think Timber was going to play left back because I, I think he could invert. I think he could defend better. Um, and I think he was quicker. I think Zinchenko would have sat on the bench for most of this season if Timber wasn't injured. So I read some of your comments. Lexus says, give him a year extension on his two years, then sell. Uh, L said, um, sell him ASAP. He did his part. Uh, now off you go. Uh, Timber is a proper defender. Highbury's local badger said, I want Zinchenko gone. Good riddance. Um, Roscoe said, with Kiwi, Tomiyasu, and uh, Timber, it's peak. And that's a good point. Do we need him? Could My other th um, thought process, though, could you keep him as a midfielder? Start playing him in midfield. Left-footed centre mid, good on the ball. I'm really shocked that Arsenal have never given him a run in the middle of midfield. He could be a quality midfielder. And where they're wasting him at left back. He started centre mid for Ukraine against England. And he played very well against England. King says play him in midfield. Uh, Jason said he needs to play in midfield. Uh, JV said we are winning comfortably without him. I have to admit, the comment that really puts it into context is... If you've got Timber fit, Kivior playing decent there. And you've got Tomiyasu who can play there. Do you really need Zinchenko? If you're not playing him in midfield... Maybe you could get rid of him, you know, if there's a club willing to pay good money for him. I do like his quality on the ball. I, I do. I would like to see him get a little run in midfield. But, you know, we are now Rice is back. Well, Rice has been there. Partey's back. Jorginho's playing well. You've got Odegaard, sometimes have a Smith throw. It's just where, where do you get him in the team to give him the run, I suppose, is the problem. And... Uh, so that's interesting anyway on Zinchenko. I'll leave that poll up for a little while to let you vote on that. Now, the second part of this article, there's a little bit more as well, but um, David Ornstein said, so much of the summer business will be contingent on exits. You could envisage the likes of Ramsdale, Tierney, Tavares, Lukonga, Smith-Rowe and Enketia all being looked at by suitors. And it's interesting that you he, he actually named names as well. Now... Would you be comfortable? Uh, have you got any problem with Arsenal selling all of those players? I've got to be honest. There's only one player on that list that for me is a bit like, oh, no. And it's, are you fit, bruv? But even I'm getting to the point where it's like, we we got to be ruthless now. My thing with ESR is I don't think he's had a persistent run of games under Mikel Arteta since he's come back from injury. So how can we say he's finished if he hasn't had a chance to prove it? Having one game against Forrest, then benching him, he's never going to look like Ronaldinho after, you know, not starting a game for two years. But it, it is getting to the point where the manager clearly doesn't trust him. Ramsdale, no problem. Not going to be a second choice keeper. You get rid of him. Tierney, it's a shame, but he's injury prone. Even in Spain, he's been injured. Get rid of him. Tavares, get that dog kisser out of here. Lekonga, use the loot and form, get as much as you can. Smith Rowe, I mean, I wouldn't want to sell him, but I can see it happening. And Eddie and Ketty, I mean, he should have been gone two years ago. So for me, I'm looking, you should be getting at least 30 million for Ramsdale. I think you probably get 20 million for Tierney because of the injury problems. Tavares, I don't think he's worth a lot. I think you get your money back. We paid 8 million for him. Um, La Conga, I honestly think with his form at Luton, you should be getting 15 million for him. We paid 17 million for him. 
Uh, he's a Belgian international, though. He doesn't hardly get in the Belgium squad. But, you know, you use that as a selling point of view. Smith Rowe, I, I wouldn't want to see him go. But the thing is, clubs want him. West Ham like him. Newcastle like him. So the fact that clubs would pay decent money for him, it would be difficult for Arsenal to turn that down. If you could get £35 million for Smith Rowe, I think the club would probably take it, which would... I wouldn't like that, but I, I get it at the same time. And Eddie, you know, if you can get 20 million plus for him, you should be getting 100 million for those players. 30 plus for Ramsdale, 20 for Tierney, that's 50. Tavares, 8 million. 12 to 15 for Laconga, that's 70. Smith Rowe should be 30 and Ketty should be at least 20. That should be minimum 100 to 120 million. Minimum. And there's still more players that you could get rid of around that. Obviously, Cedric, El Nenny are out of contract, so you release them. That gets your wage bill a little bit lower. And then um, you've even got players like Marquinhos. You've got players like, um, who else have you got? Charlie Patino, whether he stays long term. Listen, there's players. There's no excuse. Arsenal have got plenty of players that they can sell. Wages, Tierney's on about 120. Ramsdale's on about 100. I think Laconga's on 70. They could save half a million, six, 700 grand maybe on wages. So no excuse. Fabio Vieira for me as well is another one that two seasons, he hasn't really done anything. Thomas Partey, 200 grand a week. You could possibly get rid of him as well. This football club will have no excuse. I expect this to be Arsenal's biggest ever transfer window. We did 230 million last summer. I would expect us to be at 250 million this summer. Um, Big C, you really want Odegaard and Zinni as eights? Then brothers are soft. Listen, I'm not saying that um, Zinchenko should start in centre mid. I'm saying since he's been at the club, we haven't really played him in midfield. And he might be a better midfielder than some of the guys we've played there. Um, Dan said, Big C, did you look at the financial report? We had a loss of 52 million. I'm not surprised. It was 45 million the year before, but this is for last season. I'm not surprised, mate. We haven't been in the Champions League, I believe. Uh, I think that's for last season anyway, but we haven't been in the Champions League for years. We are terrible at selling players. We've given big contracts to players that haven't performed. Let's be honest, how many Arsenal players at the moment are massive, and I mean massive, shirt sellers. Like, there aren't that many. There's a few, but there's not that many. I remember when Aubameyang was at Arsenal. You go to the Emirates, 14 Aubameyang all over the place. Alexis Sanchez, 7, all over the place. 10 Ozil, everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Henri and Vieira and them guys, it goes without saying. But, you know, you need commercially big players worldwide as well in the modern game to make big money. You know, Mo Salah is absolutely huge worldwide. You know, he's massive, absolutely massive. You look at seven, eight years ago, nobody wore PSG shirts. Nobody. Who cared? No disrespect. Outside of PSG fans, who cared about PSG eight years ago? I bet over the last five years, a lot of you guys in the comments have bought a PSG shirt at some time. I had a PSG shirt. I went on holiday, PSG shirt. I think I had a, a Mbappe on it or something. It was, you know, sponsored by Air Jordan. It was a wavy shirt, Mbappe. I'm on holiday. Yeah, I'll wear that. And it's because of the commercial thing, you know. So you need players that are commercially popular worldwide. You know, those things improve the money. Come on, man. We know them Jordan PSG tracksuits are hard. Exactly. No one weren't wearing PSG tracksuits. Maybe Ronaldinho days you might have had a little one. but So you've got to be commercially big and, and interesting to people as well, you know, in order to make yourself even bigger. Um, I'm going to show you the second part of this Ornstein report that he's come out with. And... Um, He's talking because somebody yesterday was saying, a few of you were saying in the comments, actually, um, why do you have this um, feeling that Arsenal are going to buy a striker? How are you so confident that Arsenal are going to get a, a striker in when we're scoring so many goals? And uh, I said, look, man, I, I, listen, I'm not an ITK, so I could be completely wrong. But 
I genuinely believe that we will sign a striker this summer. Now, Ornstein said on Arsenal's targets in the summer, he said a striker is clearly the main focus. I told you, stick with me, people. We will buy a striker this summer. He said, and they have admiration for Sesko, Jokerez and Ferguson and others. Um, again, for me... If you, I know he says and others, but looking at those three, Sesko, I'm not fully convinced he's ready for Arsenal yet. Ferguson also, I think he needs more time to develop. Jokerez, I'm not going to lie, I'm on the hype train at the moment. He looks a baller. Um, hopefully the others are, are awesome men and Tony and players like that. He said, then there is a long-term desire to bring in competition or backup in the wide area Neto remains of interest, but he is not the only option. And it is unlikely Arsenal what I will pay what I understand to be Wolves' asking price of £80 million. So Wolves are asking for £80 million for Pedro Neto. We're not going to pay that for a guy that is not going to start on a regular basis. He then says, depending on departures from midfield, a 6 or an 8 might be needed. The long-term links to Zubamendi... Uh, show Arsenal have substance. So without knowing, it looks like Zubimendi in midfield, a striker and a right winger, but the right winger might not be Neto. And listen, I'm with you, Static. Well, like, is Neto worth 80 million? No. But you can't blame them for asking for 80 million pounds because the modern market is inflated. If I'm Wolves and I'm going, hang on a minute, Chelsea just paid 88 million for Mudrick. You know, Justin Beaver with pace, Ukraine Bolt. So why am I not going to ask for 80 million for Pedro Neto, who is an absolute baller? A hell of a player. Trixie said Neto will go to, will go to City. And he could do, because let's be honest, Mares left. They don't have an out-and-out -out right winger. Doku's a left winger. Grealish a left winger. Bernardo's been playing a bit more central. Neto probably starts at Man City. Neto doesn't start at Arsenal ahead of Saka. So, I don't blame them for asking for big money. I think we'll go for Zubamendi in the summer. £52 million release clause. Sounds like he's willing to leave this summer as well. Simple, no negotiation. You get it done. Salman, you're right. George Mendes is Neto's agent. George Mendes does a lot of work with Edu. I'm sure they could sway it somehow. You know, most of that 80 million probably not even going to Wolves. You know, it's like you said, it's going to Mendes. So I'm sure there's ways around it. A few brown envelopes, maybe you can get Neto to Arsenal. Uh, big up South London's finest. Let's get the likes up. Over 2,000 of you in the chat. 37 on Twitch. Big up the whole C unit locked in. As always, happy Friday. Hope you're well. Uh, Jokerez, Zubamendi, Diamande, and Nico Williams. Nico Williams is one that I'm not sure about. Very quick, raw. I think he scored last night in the semi-final for Athletic. I think his brother scored as well. I'm waiting for the Rafinha links every summer. Rafinha gets linked. So, yeah. Listen, striker, right winger, centre midfielder. I think they're the positions we need to address. Zubamendi, I've always said... I haven't seen enough of him to know. Looks very good on the ball. Is he a bit lightweight? Looks a bit small and not too big. But a lot of you have said he's very good on the ball. So if we get him in, I hope he's Santi Cazorla-esque. Definitely need a right winger to compete with um, with Saka. And we need a striker. Um, but yeah, Evan Ferguson, I just don't think he's developed quite enough yet to be our main striker. Uh, Jorge said, put Zinni in midfield, playing the eight role. Interesting. Latte said, sell Zinni and Jesus and arrest Pep. Keep ESR and Bambi. Nah, Sambi's got to go for me. Use the good form at Luton, and bin him. Get rid of him. I hear you though, arrest Pep. He's fraudulent behavior from Pep. Uh, Sam said, there's a reason why we haven't been conceding goals. Timber was signed to replace Zinni. He either plays in midfield or warms the bench. I'm with you on that, with Zinni. Young Gunnar, uh, we should go for Hin Carpe from Leverkusen. Decent centre-back. Then take Mitchell and Elise from Palace. Even offer for Eddie or Tavares in return. Yeah, Palace would probably... Um, would probably take those players' offers, to be honest. Um... I think if Arsenal go to Leverkusen, we'll be going for um, Fringpong. That, that's the, that's what I think we'd be doing. 
That Hincopi, where's he from? Ecuador. Yeah, I've heard about him. I haven't seen much of him. I knew he was from South America. I wasn't sure what country. Um, yeah, he's got a good reputation. I don't know too much about him. George Guna said, um, need a baller next to Rice. Someone like Guti, but the kids won't know. Listen, Guti, man, what an assist legend he was, man. The back heel pass to um, Benzema. Unbelievable. Would you take Latoura Martinez, a player that I'm, I'm not a fan of? I'll be honest, it sounds harsh because he bangs in goals in Italy, but I've always said Latoro, I think, plays better next to somebody with Dzeko, with Lukaku, by himself in the Prem, back to goal. I'm just not sure about Latoro, and he's expensive. Inter, look at him as their crown jewel. He would be expensive. Johan Bakayoko from PSV. He looked lively against us. Somebody like that would be um, would be a lot cheaper and easier to get, that is for sure. Uh, Martinez is so strange, brother. Don't like him at all. Yeah, let me end the poll. Let me end the poll. We're about to wind up the show, people. So let's see um, your thoughts on Zinchenko. 48% of you say sell him. 33% keep him for another year. And... Um, 21% say extend the contract. So the majority of you saying get rid of your boy Zinchenko in the summer. You've seen enough. Jokerez is cold. I can't lie, says Shaw. Haswan said De Jong, Tony, we move. Uh, listen, I wouldn't mind them to um, both good players. FFP worries me more than who we are going to buy. We need cash. I think at the start of the summer, you will see the clear-out begin before we do too much. I think, you know, like I said, Tavares, Eddie Nketiah, La Conga, um, you know, you're looking at players like uh, Nketiah, as I said, Ramsdale, maybe Fabio Vieira, maybe ESR. Arsenal will sell a number of players. You then get your Cedrics and your El Nenis out on a free as well. The wage bill needs to be cut. Arsenal need to make money this summer. Get a hundred million in with transfers. That may enable us to go to 250, 300 million um, in terms of players coming in. You've got to balance the books. Brian said I'd sell Zinni if the right price, but if he says I'd like to see him in midfield from time to time, he's a good squad player. Yeah, and I hear you on that. As a squad player, not bad. As a starting left back, I think the level's got to go up. I think Timber, if he's fit, will play at left back anyway. Tierney's another one that will be sold, in my opinion. And listen, people, thank you very much for tuning in today. Really appreciate your support, as always. Make sure you hit the like button on the way out. YouTube loves the algorithm. Um, the more comments, the more likes, the more they share it. Share the content around as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm back at 7 o'clock tonight. Curtis and Turkish show. The OGs, as we're going to call it. Um, so make sure you tune in for that over on his channel. Um, we'll be chatting all things football, Arsenal. I'm sure there'll be a hip-hop chat somewhere in there. And uh, I'll have a pre-recorded video out tomorrow. Sunday, Manchester Derby watch along. And then Monday, Arsenal, Sheffield United watch along. Big up to each and every one of you. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. And I will see you all tomorrow, people. Bless. <laughs>